I'm not sure how to take Shoti, since I like this woman. I like her very much. But she is not exactly normal for a Gon worshipper. I'm not sure what to make of her beliefs, but at the least, she is able to entertain the idea of Aethys being something that we may have to stop. I feared after meeting her that she might get in the way of that, since I really had no idea what Aethys was up to when we met. But now I am fearing what he might be up to is to cause the end of the world. Aethys claimed it was beautiful. I suppose to a twisted and everlasting entity such as himself, destroying all kith might be considered beautiful, but I do not. And here, I think Shoti and I would see eye to eye. I don't think any one of my crew would side with Aethys if he aims to destroy us all. So Shoti confused me at first by making me think that it was a dare that she was interested in. Maybe she was, and maybe she was interested in both of us. Perhaps she thought that I was out of her reach, based on what she said in the Temple of Gong. I cannot help but think she always liked me because she said some pretty obvious things since we met, but I suppose that it could be because of what I said, she just never thought that she was worthy enough to catch my eye. She doesn't seem to regard herself very highly, does she? Well, I actually think she has a lot to offer, and we make a good pair. That accent, though, yes, I really like it. She's also a very attractive woman. Well, despite my death and being returned to life, if things like this await me, then it might well have been worth it. Shoti makes me feel very happy. It may be late, but the Queen is up, I was told, and I could go speak to her if I want to. We are blessed to count you as Juana. Oh, look at these two big tigers in front of her. A little intimidating. You make a habit of turning up uninvited. The Queen has affected a far more relaxed posture. A pair of tigers lounge indolently beside her seat. Kohopa, Tangaloa. Welcome, our guest. She nods down to the cats. They fix me with an attentive stare that caused many of the courtiers and attendants to gasp. Watch out. When these things lick, well, I hope for your sake you're not ticklish. <laughs> you travel with a brave crew, Watcher. Onikaza smiles up at Adair. Good Kahopa, good Tangaloa. Nothing to fear, I say. If a queen cannot wrangle two cats, what right has she to the dead fire? She drags a hand over both of their massive heads. They lean into the gesture. There are many leagues between here and Hasongo. I trust you have packed for the journey? She raises a quizzical brow. I just wanted to look around. Then look. Take in every delight within reason. But do not waste my time. She dismisses me with a casual wave, but I catch a trace of amusement in the gesture. The boldness of foreigners. She shakes her head and strokes the nape of a tiger's neck. Hmm, that's not really all I wanted to say, though. Watcher, I hope you're enjoying my city. Onakaza lifts her gaze to meet mine. You keep interesting pets, Highness. Fine beasts, are they not? Gifts from the Wapua. A tribe of proud animal trainers. Yes, they are quite beautiful cats. They can also be quite deadly. I named them Kohopa and Tangaloa, which makes the priests very unhappy. She grins to herself. Well, uh, Kohopa is Bareth. <laughs> and Tangaloa, um, the other half of Bareth. So the two halves of Bareth, the god. She grins to herself. Aruihi thinks I should feed my enemies to them alive and screaming. Ikira, I have given it thought. Mm, don't know if you want to have your animals used to the taste of kith blood. She pats Tangaloa on her head. Not content to let the attention go astray, Kahopa shifts over until his ears are under the queen's fingers. Hmm. You've been in my head since we first met. Ah, Ikira. But listen how the Watcher flatters me. Onikaza chuckles to herself and shares a smile with the attendants in earshot. When her gaze swivels back to me, a presence like a storm cloud settles over my thoughts. I cannot plant a seed in untilled soil. Akira, I want for there to be trust between us. 
<sighs> and she cannot know if she can trust me yet. She raises her eyebrows to make sure I'm paying attention. The trading companies send spies to every corner of the mountain. I say there are places they cannot go. Mass beneath a casual gesture of scratching her cheek, Monokaza taps the side of her head. Hmm. I think back at her. I understand, Highness. But you did not climb all the way up the mountain to pay compliments, I say. I feel a light tug as the mental connection breaks, for now. Anna Castle settles back in her chair and nods to me, her eyes straying to her attendants only briefly. I wish to discuss the Juana. We are the stewards of the dead fire. Our ancestors made this pact with the goddess Nagati long before Ukaizo, before the island vanished. She closes her eyes and bows her head. How long have the Juana been here? How long does coral grow? <laughs> Anakaza chuckles to herself. It is said the tribes assembled when Kohopa took his first mouthful of Amira's hatchling. And we will be here until the sea rises above our heads. Hmm. All right. You've always been here and you always will be here. You mentioned a pack within Gati. The one which taught us to shape water. A light, youthful smile overtakes her. It is said that Nagati bound her four guardians to protect the islands, the Adra, the seas, and the tribes. In return, she gifted them the forms of water shaping. Interesting. For so long as our promise is kept, the goddess gives us dominion over water. Anakaza touches her brow with reverence. Did I do your mother justice, Takehu? <sighs> Akera. Somewhere in the abyss, she blinks her enormous eyes with approval, I say. Awfully cozy how the tribes get to use the endorsement of a goddess in a land dispute. Maya folds her arms and furls her brow, a knowing smirk crossing her lips. If that is all you see, then Nagati's lesson is lost on you. Anikaza shakes her head. May I live to see Rawatai's conceit unravel them from within. <laughs> Okay, I didn't... Hmm. Back to my other questions. Speak on. A Ta friend of the crown should be well informed, I say. A friend of the crown? At least she sees me as that. Tell me about the Nekataka. Nekataka is older than our memory. We found the great city in ruins, and the Kahanga have spent generations replacing every cracked stone. Who built Nekataka? The Huana, of course. The mark of our ancestors runs deep. Walls and districts are not how we would build a city today, but this place has echoes of the past. And our future, I say, if we can but reach to grasp it. This is a Juana city, but the trading companies are both represented here. Hmm. Anakaza considers my reflection, nodding. The Valians were very forthright in their desire to carve out a permanent outpost, I say. Hmm. Forthright? So they were pushy. When cannon shot echoed across the seas, the Crown opened negotiations with Rawatai's armada. A healthier alternative to war. I see. So instead of being conquered, you let them have a presence here and negotiated with them. Trading agreements, at least, anyways. My brother thinks I am too lenient with our visitors. I say, I will accept even this uneasy balance. Back to my other questions. First, a question of my own. Hanakazi steeples her fingers and observes me closely. This city is not how the tribes would live. Walls stand between neighbors and the beach is too far to walk comfortably. Hmm, yes. There are angles of this city I cannot see from my garden. What place has Nekataka in the great pattern of the dead fire? Well, this is the, one of the points I wanted to bring up with her. I was hoping it would get to this. I've seen what lies at the bottom. It isn't pretty, Highness. Bottoms seldom are, I say. Do we still speak of the city? I have lost track. Takehu winks. Anikaza only rolls her eyes. Adair seems pleased, Maya cocks her head and listens. Akira, my thanks for your perspective. I say you give me much to consider. Well, question for me, why do you put up with the trading companies? 
because they would, co would have conquered you otherwise, I guess? Because we are the shrub in the shadow of an old growth. Hmm. Anikaza looks away and sighs through her nose. Even the gods may protest, but this city blooms from the wealth of foreigners. Yes, I can see that. Aruihi would have me force them back to their ships. I say it is better to feed my allies under a single roof. All right. Farewell. Interesting. I am glad that she's the one in charge, not her brother Aruhi. All right, so I was given a job to do by the Bardato family. Um, this one. Azali Bardato is convinced that the Valura family is planning to make a move against her. Yeah, it's been some time since I dealt with the feuding families. Um, she's asked me to seek out information regarding a Valera plot against her. She suggested I start with Zilli, a more easygoing member of the Valera family. She said that Zilli Valera placed his loot around one of the local watchtowers. So we're going to go down to Queen's Birth and find this Zilli now, and then we're going to go to the Valiant Trading Company headquarters. On our way out of the palace, it seems that Takehi wants to speak to me. Huh? What do you want? Oh. <laughs> I inadvertently grabbed my sword. Who was your owner? A much better swordswoman than you, to start. Well, I'm not a swordswoman, so... <laughs> There has to be more to her than that. How'd she come by those skills? Killing troublesome animancers, mostly. Behind Modwar's words, curl a cat's mischievous smile. Hmm. She was an agent of Dunard Row, at least for a while. Her name is Ingfrith. Hmm. Huh. Who were you before you were put in the sword? None of your god's damn business. Okay, animats rarely retain their consciousness, let alone their memories. You're different. Nice of you to notice. I hear what could only be a sneer edge of Modra's voice. I was a ruler beyond compare. Handsome, just, exceedingly well-muscled, beloved of my subjects and favored by Wodica. Very funny. In truth, I don't know who I was. So far as I can remember, I've always been a sword. Whatever memories I had of a time before, they're gone. Okay. I guess so. Good, I was starting to get bored. Uh, take my leave. Talk to that damn thing. Okay, Takehu wants to speak with me. What do you want? And I, don't want to kill I don't want to speak to you. The oars to command, Captain. I catch Takehu glancing my way. He quickly focuses elsewhere and smooths back his hair when he notices my attention. Something on your mind? Is there anything the Watcher does not see? Takehu grins, but the look quickly diminishes. We have both seen the worst of the city. How the Reparo cluster like sea rats. Takehu's hand unconsciously strays towards his stomach. Without Delver's row, Onakaza must work harder to deserve the trust of the Roparu. Hmm. Yeah. I, I see that. How did the stone walls and paved lanes of Nekataka divide us so? He sighs, shaking his head. You have walked the length of Nekataka's spine. How would you serve the needs of all these people at once? I would probably collaborate on a new plan for the city if I was on Akaza. Do you think that something in the great pattern of Nekataka does not align with the Hawana way? <laughs> the way that it's going obviously is not working, so you've got to come up with a better plan of organization. Nodding, Takehu absently tugs one of his hairs. For the moment, he seems totally withdrawn. Finally, he snaps back into focus, regarding me with a smile which seems both genuine and strained. I was hard-pressed to find insight like yours in Pariki's Overlook. Some of the tension leaves Takehu's shoulders, and he stands a little taller than before. Hmm. I might have questions for you. You have questions? Ikera, I have answers. 
Tell me about water shaping, Takehu. Ah, the art of our ancestors, I say. To bend water to our will is a gift from Mother Ngati to her chosen people. Takehu stands tall and grins with pride. Since devastation swept our way of life out to sea, too much of the art has been lost. Hmm. Periki, founder of the guild, organized the lore of Ngati's talent into a series of postures and meditations we call the Four Forms of Water Shaping. Four Forms? Ah, it is only by force of habit that I omit the final form. We do not speak of it in the guild. What would that be? The Form of Transcendence. Takehu closes his eyes and concentrates. Holding out his palms, he bites his lower lip and focuses. Finally, he shakes his head and stands at ease once more. Only a story, I say. Even crafty Pariki could not commit this ancient form to her scrolls. Really? It was said that our ancestors could shape the very oceans of the Deadfire. This was Ngati's true gift, but we have yet to recover it from the ruins of our past. Hmm. Maybe that's what caused the ruins to begin with. All right, let's be off. Okay, let's go find. Let's go rest. I'm getting tired. Right. It's about. It's after midnight. So. I guess we'll go to Queen's Birth to the uh, inn that's there first. While sleeping. Adrift in dreams, Shoti lies curled on her side, sweating, muscles quivering. She whimpers low in her throat. I watch her sleep. Her chest rises and falls faster and deeper until she's very nearly heaving. Suddenly she jolts upright, eyes wide and terrified. She chokes back a shriek. She calms. Confused, eyes searching my face. Reckon that's the first time I ever bore witness to my own demise. It was not pretty. She worries her bottom lip with her teeth. Oh, Shoti, what is with you in these dreams? Never woke with such a driving need for reaping before. It's making my hands shake. Hmm. Didn't the cleansing work? It did for a while. But then it wore off. All this essence I've gathered. It soaked the blessing right up. Left me with hardly none. <laughs> hmm. Okay. You're losing your light to the darkness. Rekindle it by helping the living. She sucks in a deep breath. You sound like my high priestess Samhain. She never shuts up about the living, when she ought to worry more about the dead. Hmm. Well, that's what I am worried about. I'm trying to get you to focus on something better than that. Seems the more souls I gather, the better I see Gon's will. And the less I get a wink of sleep. Maybe you should release the souls you're holding. Well, sure. I mean to. Eventually. A shadow of a smile shades her lips. Us Gaunites, we're supposed to shepherd lost souls, not just gather them. The harvesting's only the first part. If I were to dump the souls, it might make me dream less, like before. Or, darn it, who knows. Hmm. Maybe it'd just make it all worse. Either way, I've got to find my purpose. She turns her face away, bottom lip trembling. Slowly, her fingers reach for the hem of my shirt. She rubs the pads of her fingers over it, holding to me in the lightest of touches. Hmm. Maya and Takehu <laughs> seem to have known about this. Will you help me, Watcher? Hmm. I touch the corner of her mouth. I'd do anything for you, Shoti. Her happiness warms her whole face as a bright blush prickles over her skin. I was hoping you might would. Sometimes I feel like, with you by my side, I can stand against gods. <laughs> Ironically, that's what we're doing, actually. Takehu grins and pats down a nest of his breathing hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking actually an Audra vein would be the best way to get rid of this. Um, we'll find an Audra vein and release your burden. It's the best way to ensure the souls reach the beyond. It'll need to be a potent source to overpower the draw of my lantern. It's got to be luminous for sure. She nods, clearly devising a plan of action. That's one problem solved. 
But what about the itty bitty issue regarding the god of rebirth not actually being in hell? Hmm. The souls will make it safely, but who's to see to their proper reseeding? This is a huge risk of Aeora's balance. You really trust Maugrin not to rebirth Aethasians as warriors of the flame? Think Galloway won't be greedy? So each of the gods can snatch up whatever they want, is what you're saying. Gone aside, the gods' past actions don't instill me with the greatest confidence. Hmm. What else would you propose? Normally, I'd simply safe keep them until the god of rebirth could return to hell. But... If that happens... Hmm. I'll say nothing. You're right. I ought to deliver as many souls to hell as I can. Before it's too late. Hmm. Maya smirks and folds her arms. We need to empty my lantern right away. I think we do. Gods, but you're clever. This is why Gon directed me into your path. I just know it. Hmm. Adoration filling her eyes, she grins at me before turning away. All right, let's go find this uh, this boy. So again, we're going to find Zilly. Um, he's a member of the Valera family. So, <clears throat> thinking it over, I only know of two luminous outer pillars I've come across. The one in Port Maggi, or east of Port Maggi, buried underneath the arena in the island. And then there's the luminous outer pillar at the top of the Helian Temple here in Nekataka. Where the Animancers are. And I think that we should go there. It's close by. We don't have to dock in Port Magie and then trek eastward. So she said by one of the watchtowers. I wonder if this is him. This young man appears either to be composing or practicing a tune on his lute. He stops mid-strum, looking up at me with a friendly expression. Uh, apologies, Lord, if I intrude upon your peace. Inspiration eludes me still. Eludes you? I if you are after some scenery, I suggest the far end of the bridge. It smells better when the wind blows in from the sea, of course. <laughs> um, I had some questions. Oh, sure. What about? Your family's been having trouble with the Bardatos, right? Guess that means you've spent at least an hour or two in town. <laughs> Zilly sighs. Well, smart. Better to stay out of what doesn't concern you. Maybe. I don't know. I just don't have a mind for strategy. He balances his loot on his hip and sighs. Whatever Persa is cooking up, it's only going to make things worse. Persa? I caught cousin Persa running her mouth off about the job Belda got her involved in. Really? Persa's been spending time in the gullet. In the tavern down there. Maybe she could tell you more. Hmm, maybe. Sorry. I guess you got a mouthful, huh? I really ought to get back to my loot. Okay, no, you've been most hopeful. In the gullet. So, Persa's in the hole in the gullet. That will be our next stop, then. We have to make a few more runs around this city. We're going to go to the hole, and then after that, we're going to go up to the Animasters in the Sacred Stair. Alright, so we're looking for a woman named Persa. I think it's a woman. It would be a Valian. Hello. He coughs knuckles pressed to his lips. I asked him his name, and it's not Persa. Uh, this might take a while. I wonder if the bartender has seen... Persa. Need something? Um, ask her if she knows a person. She says no. Okay, that doesn't help. Raw Italians, Juana, and all sorts of kith. There's another. Looks like another Valen here. You were speaking to me, eh? Go on then. I ask her her name. It's not Persa. I don't know what that thing is. Vithrak. Um, you wouldn't happen to know a Persa, would you? 
Mind where you're walking. He tells me he doesn't know Persa. So we're going to go upstairs. Hopefully we'll be able to find a Persa up there. Juana. Looks like maybe Animaster's work in here. Passed out pirate. Big. Must be a Juana. I wonder if it's Valian over there. Splendid. I could not be better at Emiko. <clears throat> Ask her name. It's not Persa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Where can I find... Where in the hell could I find Persa? Well, maybe he just gave me wrong information. I mean, there is a... a it does go on further. I think there's a balcony out there. Perhaps I can hear. Speak to it. Find the Persa out there, I mean. Okay. It's the only place to go. And if there's no person here, then yeah, we've been given the runaround. And there's no one here, but a hungry dog. Huh. What a waste of our time. Let's go back in. It occurred to me that we hadn't gone behind the bar. There's more rooms back here. Oh, my man. appetite has abandoned me. That is a big one. I've got it. Oh. Uh, hello. Why do you bother me, little kith? Uh. Hey, I'm not little. You're all little to me. <laughs> of course we are. She squints her broad, sloping brow, wrinkling in consternation. Little and squishy. Oh, that's nice. You enjoy working here? No. She hawks a fat gobbet of spit. It lands besides the food she's preparing and splatters. Oh, now that I see how the food's cooked here, you never, ever eat this stuff. The gullet reeks of illness. The beds are too small. An imp tried to nest in my hair. <laughs> and Firna, the tavern keeper, refuses to give me more than one day off a month. How am I supposed to hunt when I am chained to this stove? Hmm. She scrunches her face into a grimace. <laughs> Maybe I'll become a pirate. Get myself a bird and an eye patch. The patch could do you a world of good, but I can't say I recommend. Berta silences Maya with a raised palm. Both. She cuts Maya a vicious glare. Hmm. I don't know about this, but she's unhappy. Could we use her on my crew? You should maybe join my crew? How do you mean? She narrows her eyes and regards me with renewed interest. Uh, on second thought, never mind. Suit yourself. She shrugs and returns to her work. No, I do not want someone that is the cook the way she cooks. Ugh, just no. Venom sack, I find it your need. Hey. In and out. No complications. Relax. We're emptying a vault, not water shaping. Really? Martino better come through with that boat he promised. I'm sure there's a dinghy in your future. That must be them. They're planning to uh, pr break into the Bardatos. Okay. Huh? I think I found all the information I'm going to. Hopefully that's enough for Azali. Okay, so we're going to go to the Luminous Adravane. Oh, we don't need to sneak anymore. They can't even see us. We're too far away. 